Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our we weekly coffee chats. I'm, of course, joined with one of my besties, Catherine Edwards, with all of our besties joining us right now at this uh, this um, interweb coffee table that we have all over the world to, to hash out these things that are on our mind. How are you doing this morning, Catherine? I'm doing really well. I've got my lovely Radiance drink, which I just absolutely love it. And I feel I need it because I've been a little bit um, fallen off the bandwagon a bit, which I'm going to get back on with my diet recently, just because I've been burning the candles at both ends. And so today is my, my reset day, right? Get back into good habits again. Um, but generally speaking, I'm pretty good. But I think the subject matter we're going to talk about today is really important. And it's a challenging one because, you know, it's a really hard one for people to deal with. Yeah, and it you guys these as you most of our our friends watching right now with us um, know these are some of these topics we talk about. We don't know the answer. We just recognize a problem, and so we try to find within both of us and in the comment section with you guys resolutions or ways to course correct because even these problems can seem bigger than us sometimes. But if we all just start course correcting, then it will there will be a domino effect, right? And hopefully, it can change the world in general and what we want to talk about today guys is this this concept of gaslighting and this is going to break out into a lot of other different topics and basically what gaslighting is guys is is when somebody it's kind of makes some it is designed to make someone feel crazy so what it is is it's taking if somebody like let's say for my example the example that kind of triggered me to want to talk about this is let's say that somebody comes up to you and says hey you know, this guy is bullying me for no reason. And that person says, well, no, you're picking on this guy by telling you're they're changing the reality of the situation to make to make the reality, the truth of what happened, not the truth in your mind. And, and, and does that make sense? And oftentimes it supports the the abuser. It supports the bad guy instead of the victim. Does that make sense, Catherine? Can you explain it better than me? I think it, well, it really makes sense to me. So, you know, my understanding of, of gaslighting and how I use it is you're literally twisting the situation. So we talk about the white hats and the black hats, and we talk about how what the black hats do, everything is inverted. And gaslighting is a perfect example to me of how everything is inverted. So I come to Bryce and I say, um, you know, I am I'm being really picked on by this person. They're doing this or that. And she comes straight back at me and say, well, you know, you must have said something and you must have done this. And actually, I really like them and, you know, make me feel like and, and we've seen this as a pattern for years and years before it had the word gaslighting, which is why so many abuse people don't speak up. Right. Because as soon as they speak up they have this gaslighting um, where they're made to think that either they're making it up or they're exaggerating or they did something to deserve it. And this can be in all walks of life. But I think at the moment it's so prevalent because there's such a lack of self-responsibility and everything we see on the media, in the pots, everything. You know, you look at what's happening with the American at the moment, most or, or any of it's exactly i'm not pretending it's not the same in the uk because it is it's all the attention is on blaming the other side normally for what you've done it's like right. if someone you know so yeah it's a very complex issue it's been around forever and now it's got a label that we can use but i think also the label is very misused as well it is misused and it's a specific form of manipulation basically yeah. I had text, so I'll kind of give you guys the story of how we started this conversation, and I'll let you take it away, Catherine. I had text you this morning because we were trying to figure out what we are going to talk about. And a couple of days ago, our mutual friend, Shanti, and I had done a video called Christians Behaving Badly because both Shanti and I have received a lot of very inappropriate threats, um, people wanting to unalive us um, from Christians basically because we challenged the religion. We've never challenged God. We both have firm beliefs in God, but we've challenged the religion and we've had evidence to support why certain things aren't adding up within this particular, and I believe it's the biggest religion in the world. So obviously if you're awake, you know, anything that's that big has been corrupted. That's just common sense. And for me, I was telling Catherine, you know, when I started this, I've always been very open-minded when it comes to religion because I do just basically have a belief in God. And I think that's what's really allowed me to perceive other religions and see beauty in other 
faiths because I, I don't see God and religion as the same thing anyway. And when I started going through the missing books of the Bible on my channel, like four years ago, what was happening for me was even with that being said, there was a lot of deconstruction that was also happening for me because this is the faith that I grew up in. I grew up Presbyterian. I went to Sunday school every Sunday. So even though I have an open mind on religion, I still was deconstructing going, oh, well, they lied about that. They lied about that. And as somebody who grew up in that religion, I'm allowed to have emotion. When you find out you're, you've been lied to, you're allowed to be emotional. Look at people who come out of Mormonism or come out of Scientology or come out of the Jehovah's Witnesses when they figure out they've been lied to. Now, what, what happened, what started to happen for both Shanti and myself, we both started to get a lot of emails threatening us, threatening our, our lives. I got emails threatening my family's lives. Um, comically, I, I brought this up. I had people emailing me saying, you know, really smart men have told us that these missing books are bad. And my response is, are you kidding me? Because really smart men have also told you to get the Zapperty Duda. What's the difference? It's just a book. Read it. You don't have to believe it. Read it. And, and, um, and so I, Shanti and I both have been calling this out as whistleblowers being like, listen, this is a problem. If you, if you claim that you have the one true religion and that everybody else is going to hell and you have the one true religion and you worship the Prince of Peace, but you're the only ones sending threats to unalive people. I had someone say in an email that I should be picked up by the military and sent to Gitmo and executed because I practice yoga. I'm sorry. If that's the world we're walking into, that's way worse than the controllers today. That's way more, way more control, way more cabal, way more evil. We're that controlled. And, and so, and then I had, and I, we had, we got so much support on that episode. Like so many people, you know, we weren't trying, we were trying to find a resolution. Like, how do we work through this? How do we stop being attacked? Neither Shanti and I are on churches, YouTubes, leaving comments. We stay on our own pages. We, we stick to our, we mind our own business and we, we, you know, with our audience, we never go and harass other people that have different opinions from us. We just don't do it. Right. And most of the people were so awesome and so supportive. And I loved all the feedback we got from other people and hearing other people's experience. Well, I had one comment in my comment section. I ended up blocking this person. She had watched like half of the video and was gaslighting me and basically saying that I was bashing the Christians. And that's why, no, 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 I, I wasn't bashing the Christians. I was reading the missing books of the Bible, pointing out where we were lied to by the powers that be. And then the Christians started to attack me. I said something. I was a whistleblower and said something. And now I, the victim, am being blamed. And this is why so many victims of horrific crimes don't come forward. And we see this. And, and so I just ended up blocking the person because I'm not going to have somebody on my channel that is actively get, trying to gaslight the situation, actively trying to manipulate the situation. That's not good for me. And it's not good for the other people who are on the channel who are also trying to find resolution. And there are so many beautiful, beautiful Christians out there who've never once threatened me or Shanti. And in fact, they've been very supportive. Of, of of that work and very open to what we have to say. And so anyway, Catherine and I, it, it, it pissed me off so much because as somebody who's, it made me feel bad for people like Kathy on Rumble that we talked to the other day, our, my friend, our friend Jesse, like people who get told they're, you know, get gaslit a lot as whistleblowers. And, mm. and so, yeah, I, and, and from our little corner of the internet, I'm like, you mean to tell me that you know that every corner of our world has been corrupt, but you really believe that the biggest religion in the world hasn't been touched? Because if you really believe that, I got a bridge in London, Catherine, and I want to sell you. Yeah, completely. I think it's, I mean, I'm laughing and I say it's hysterical, but of course it's not funny. It's like that nervous laugh that people do when they're like, oh, got no idea what the resolution is for this, because it's in all aspects of society. So I have had so many threats talking about the health side of things. And, you know, it's people, Wayne Dyer, I've said this so many times, he said, People will find a hundred things a day to be offended about. Well, I think we can change it now to a thousand things a day because the culture today is people look to criticize and they look to offend. So we talk about active listening and are you listening to respond or are you listening to understand? 
And the same thing goes. Are you listening to come up with what's wrong with it? Are you listening to be offended? Or are you listening to sort of say with a mindset of, oh, I wonder, is this something I want to explore further or not? And if not, just walk on and leave it because absolutely you shouldn't need to explore everything. Um, you know, we've all got different directions that are priorities in our lives at these time. But I think it's really what for me what's frustrating so if i walk into my local supermarket and people have got the masks on and if they're just watching mainstream media and just listening to their doctors or the news the mainstream news i don't expect them to know any better because why would you because you're so when you're only getting one source of information of course for a lot of people that's going to affect your thought process but for people that are watching channels like ours, by the very nature, they're counting themselves as being more awake. And I'm not just talking about YouTube. I'm also looking at Instagram and things like this. I mean, I will put something constructive out about have you thought about you might be able to reverse a long term chronic disease by looking at some of your lifestyles, looking at addressing the root cause. And then I get accused of um, shaming anyone that's ill and you know i was born with my endometriosis which actually is completely biologically impossible anyway but you know you might i understand you've been told that by a medical professional that wants to keep you on their medication all their life but how's that working out for you and i think i honestly don't know what the answer is because i suppose one of the answers is we just keep doing the work on ourselves and we keep being the ones that are not offended that we work on our boundaries about what's acceptable and we're the best example that we can be of doing an having an open mind. And I can honestly say, I mean, over the last few years, I've looked at so many different types of medical research and so many different types of things to say, well, what if viruses do exist? What if, ger you know, germ theory is real? I, I will still keep looking at that because I do realize that I don't know everything. You know, if I look at how I care for my animals, how I care for my animals when I was 16 is completely different to how I care for my animals now. Because when I was 16, I did only have the vet to listen to. There was no internet. There was no other, you know, I could go and get books which were out of date a lot of the time based on the products we could get then. So as we always say, when you know better, you do better. But it's a challenge and i think even people who are sitting there take the political situation because we're so used to aggressive la language mm -hmm. from those who should know better and should be set an example you know you expect parents to set a reasonable example for their children we should expect people who are in a position of authority but they don't you see this is the problem so at every layer it's broken it's you know it's interesting when you're saying that with yeah because i i don't take care of myself the same at 16 no. or 41 thank god you know and i was listening to a podcast yesterday and some it was it was actually a mormon podcast of ex-mormons or something and somebody said something that i thought was that like really it like i was like that's really it really at home he said when i was young i had lots of theories and no experience yeah. Now that I'm old, I have lots of experience and no theories. And I thought that is that that really hits home. And, you know, it's interesting, Catherine, my boyfriend talks a lot about like people who get very violent because I, I, I consider it violence when you're when you're gaslighting somebody and trying to manipulate their their tr the truth. That's a violent act, in my opinion, because that's that's harming somebody intentionally. Um, and, uh, what we're seeing as, as my boyfriend likes to say is people that lack a sense of self and you don't really get a sense of self unless you actively work on yourself to yeah. really get to know yourself. So what do we mean by us? Well, narcissists don't have sense of self. That's why they feed off of other people. Why they manipulate all the time is because they're constantly needing that supply to feel that sense of self. But people who are not narcissists typically do bury deep down have something they can rest on that that's something that they can be within themselves and so when you develop a sense of self others opinions and your own opinions won't affect you as much because you're able to observe things you're able to observe your own triggers you're able to observe other people instead of acting out those triggers instead of being the violent person instead of sending the nasty 
threatening email, threatening to unalive someone because they've, they've, they've done research that you decided to watch. You clicked on the video to watch it. And so now they must be punished because you didn't like the research that they had to present. And it has nothing to do, again, if we take that responsibility back, that autonomy back, that self-governance back, you know, here, and, and that cracks me up too, Catherine, because it's so, like, hypocritical, like an oxymoron, because here on this corner of the internet, we're all about personal sovereignty. Exactly. People in our corner of the internet don't take uh, accountability. They don't take personal sovereignty. They don't take self-governance. If, if, if you see a video where I've labeled it, like, why you know the freemasons wrote the bible here's the truth and that triggers you it is your personal responsibility not to watch it you have to if you you actively clicked on that video and you got triggered now again facts aren't feelings and feelings aren't facts i feel like i'm having to say that more and more and more to the truther community than we do to the normies who are confused about which bathroom to use mm. like facts are facts like it's a fact that the freemasons wrote the bible like that's a fact you can look that up what does that mean then that means that the real bible is under the vatican which means that we've been lied to now here's my thing is if you're a person that triggers you okay well now your responsibility is to figure out why that triggered you is it because you're afraid now because things you've been taught to believe are obviously false and if that's what's triggering you then what is truth well, truth is that you're a living, breathing being on this planet. And in my opinion, there is a God and you are of that God consciousness. So you really have nothing to fear. But it's not my fault as the presenter that the research, the actual research, the factual research has triggered you. That's not, I shouldn't be unalived for that. And frankly, I mean, I, I said this in the comment, like shame on anybody who sends death threats to people because they have a different opinion or because they presented some research you don't like shame on you you should be you should be ashamed of that because that's if i ever did that i would feel in my healing process would feel so bad and terrible for doing that that i would want to reach out and apologize to those people because i don't know it's just it's just ridiculous or for somebody like when you're in your case catherine talking about like the mental aspect of health if that's something that doesn't resonate with you then don't watch the video it's like if you've got friends we talk about abusive relationships all the time and most people have experienced some sort of abusive relationship whether it's being bullied at school or whether it's being in a narcissistic relationship or god forbid a cult or something like that but most of us can think of quite a few abusive relationships we've been in and we might even have been the abuser because if you've been brought up in that way you might have had to reach a certain stage in your life where you thought oh my goodness i'm repeating this behavior cycle i need to course correct and shanti and i spoke about this that everyone has the right to change mm -hmm. you know people do change i don't make the same decisions i did when i was 16 i don't look the same i don't eat the same i don't speak the same i don't have the same opinions um, I have some same core values, but I've got a better understanding of those. And I hope I will continue to get a better understanding of those as I go on. Sorry, it's just um, Patricia's coming back with my horse. Look at those. It's Radio coming back. Trisha. Trisha, she's a good guard dog. Um, someone's coming back with my horse. So I think with a lot of it comes down to what we've spoken to about, about boundaries. Lola, it's Romeo. It's your brother. He's just coming back with Patricia. Sorry. <laughs> um I'm um the thing is I want them to tell me when someone's in the garden because yeah. we're very isolated here. So I never sort of reprimand her because it's confusing for her because she is a brilliant guard dog. Um, but with boundaries in our personal life, that's something often we learn as we age and we often learn the hard way. When we realize that we haven't set clear boundaries, we then course correct, hopefully, in the next relationship or the next one whenever we decide to get the message. And I think this is about boundaries here. And I sort of do feel it's a bit like putting someone on the naughty step. I think this is the beauty of social media is you can block and you can delete. And I think it's really important. Honestly, we do it more. And I think quite a lot were shamed into not doing that. But I would just like, again, I'm going to use Wayne Dyer. If you squeeze an orange, only orange juice can come out. I can put my hand up and say I have never, even in the worst moments of my life, even I'm a really happy drunk. I never get nasty when I'm drunk. I'd say, say I'm a very happy drunk. I get very silly, but 
but I never get nasty. But the thing is, I'm not saying I don't have nasty thoughts in front of me, but even when I've got nasty thoughts or jealous thoughts or judgmental thoughts about people, I can honestly hand on heart say I have never spoken to someone the way I see people speak to people on social media ever. I just would never do it because I understand how damaging that can be. And you do not know the repercussions of your work. You do not know what that person is going through and if you're going to be the one that tips them over the limit. And I think this lack of self-responsibility for taking account of our actions, my rule is, is if you wouldn't say it to someone's face, you should never put it on social media. If you haven't got the guts to have that conversation, in a civil way, face to face, then don't put it on social media. And I think part of the problem is in this politically correct society, we haven't been strict enough on the boundaries. And therein lies a different issue. So when we take, I don't know what to call them anymore, Bryce. I don't want to call them the black cats. I don't want to call them Illuminati. But say, say we take Facebook or YouTube or something. We all moan about censorship. But looking at it objectively, and I'm not saying that I agree with what they're doing, please don't think I say, but equally, we've proved as a society, we are completely incapable of censoring ourselves. Yeah, it's, so, it's well, and, 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 and it goes back into that, that kind of muckety muck, we can't censor ourselves, but yet we're also trying to censor others. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I was, you know, there's tons of tele, there's a telegram group that I've just somebody sent me a slide where they're basically like, if you share any, they're a truth or telegram group, if you share anything that contradicts the opinion of the owner, they block you. Well, that's where that's the same thing that Facebook's doing. Like, that's no different. And, you know, or, or like, you know, the fact that people from this community want me to be killed because I am challenging the church. Like, well, that's the same thing that you're no different than the controllers. You're no yeah, different. Absolutely. You're no different than the people that are trying to kill Julian Assange for exposing all the stuff we needed to be exposed because um, otherwise we wouldn't be having these conversations in the first place if it wasn't for all these brave whistleblowers. And this is what's so ironic about it as we put it, it, it's just horrific that honestly, society is a mess at the moment. And I think. I know we are talking to the converted. We all are. We're all trying to do the best. I don't have the answers. Honestly, the last couple of weeks, I've really seriously considered whether I'm going to carry on doing a YouTube channel. And I'm not saying this for sympathy or anything, and I'm sure most people don't care, but I'm just like, do you know what? There's a limit to how much you can feel you can give and contribute. Actually, I'd rather go and help my local community out now, you know. So I know they'd appreciate it. And that isn't against all the wonderful listeners we've got. I'm not talking to the people that do show up and watch and comment and interact and share brilliant. I'm just saying, it, it, you know, society is a mess at the moment and somehow we've got to en masse do something different. And that has to come from individual behaviour and calling out bad behaviour in a nice way. Yeah. and showing that there's a different way of doing it you know we all know people that can really i can think of people in my life that have really called me out on my behavior or my actions but they've done it in such a constructive way that i've really made the change and i've wanted to do better and then i can think of other people that have done it in such an unconstructive way that it's just put my barriers up yeah yeah, it's it's um and there's only so much like I I you can take too like I just don't even now when I get threatening emails I just don't even open them because I can see yeah. that and I just don't even I mean and that's the thing too people's opinions people are so triggered and so you know, believe in their own opinions so much that they you know the other day I got an email um it was an essay of someone trying to save me from my new age beliefs well here you go. The term new age was created by the three of the same three letter agency that yeah. the term conspiracy theorist was created by. So obviously you haven't done your research. You're just triggered in your opinion. So you don't have facts. And secondly, if you actually wanted to stop me from practicing yoga, like the audacity, first of all, that I'm someone who's actually studied all the scriptures. I've learned Sanskrit. I've spent 18 years literally studying this. You've studied nothing of this. And somehow you think your opinion is more valuable than someone who's actually done the work. 
So come back, go read the Yoga Sutras first, go read the Bhagavad Gita first, study it first, get rid of the propaganda you've been led to believe by the controllers of the world, and then we'll have a conversation. So that's the thing too, is people come, they come with their feelings about things. It's just like the other side of this world we live in where they think we should be calling people if they they want to be an animal call them that animal we mm -hmm. that's delirious that's delusional it's same when you send me an essay about new age when you obviously never do, that's delirious it's delusional that's derangement because you haven't actually done the work to prove your point you're you're relying what's that, on what was their point you know this is what gets me is like uh, is your point to be right or is it to genuinely helpful i said i'd love to know what that no it's the point. It's that's bullying. what i mean it's, this it's is bullying. this is what i'm laughing about because you can read like i have had some really helpful people send me stuff where they've sent me stuff that i've needed to know yeah. and i've been like oh thank you because this was done in a really constructive way and it wasn't just opinion or gossip it was like i think you should see this and then when i have i've like wow thank you yes i really did need to see that yeah so we're not saying ever that there's not a thing so it's just like what's the intent behind and isn't the intent um malice gossip or to get someone to you know just pander to you or is it to actually educate inform you yeah. know no that was the lash out that essay yeah. was oh the yes i know it was that's what i mean it's like... lash out. it was done in in in, in anger and in, in hatred and in rage yeah. it was not it was that person projected and that's the thing too when you know anything about self-development or spirituality Everything you project onto somebody else is more about you than the person you're throwing it on, right? Oh, completely, completely. It's like, you know, everyone, of course we're human, so we will have opinions and opinions are really important so long as you're not stuck in them. Yeah. You know, opinions are a really good survival tactic. You know, they are important for your survival. Um, you know, every decision that we make has got some impact, either immediate, are you going to walk in front of that train, or unimmediate, are you going to eat junk food all your life? And because that will affect your life, just it's a question, it might be a bit further down the journey before that catches up with you. Um, and I think I had a lovely conversation this week with an animal communicator called Emily, and um it's a she raised some absolutely brilliant points and in a way that i hadn't really heard it before about even when you know there's a bit at the end about if for anyone who's got dogs listen to the bit at the end of the video about dogs and interacting with dogs because the way our human brain works we came to the conclusion which i'm very happy to then move on as i get more information but it's something that i've thought for a long while is that it's almost inverted when we say that you know humans are the only species that can be enlightened we've realized it's probably the other way around and actually because animals aren't caught in this ego side of things most animals are living in a pretty much sense of enlightenment anyway um it's difficult to explain without spending half an hour doing it but i'd really encourage people to listen to that just because she explains things in a really beautiful way from the animals perspectives about how they haven't given up on us but how actually it's only going to go to one of two ways either we're going to realize that we need to be if we can't connect with ourselves we can't connect with other humans and if we can't connect with ourselves and other humans it's really hard to connect with other species whether it's an animal or a tree or a cabbage plant or an aloe vera um and if we can't connect with that we can't live in harmony on mother earth so it, we're either going to learn these skills or we're going to be wiped out yeah i mean that's come to that point and it's i was just watching something this morning we know that love is the the highest vibration that there is and when you do things in love you don't you get different results than when you do things in rage or hatred or anger and yeah. you know and i would say you know whistleblowers people have a right to be upset when they find out they've been lied to they have a right yeah. to be upset about it to try to gaslight them about it is you're doing something that's not good karma for you because energy feeds energy right if we act in love and if, even if we feel ourselves triggered by the information that the person is sharing because you've also been lied to by the same information if you if you sit and act in love and just listen to the person just listen to them as a human being 
how how many people and yeah we're talking we're talking to our friends on this channel know what we're talking about we're not we're not we're trying to discuss this with you guys to find a solution like right like you know yes that is the important thing because we want your input to right. help us find the solution because we don't have it how many people have sent me these nasty emails and not even consider the fact that i'm actually a human being mm. Right. Or leave nasty comments, not even considering the fact that I'm a human being. Like when I first started going through the missing books of the Bible, like I'm a human being that grew up in a Presbyterian church. And I'm like, holy shit, I was manipulated and lied to as a kid. Let's deconstruct this because, wow, this little girl was the little girl in me was lied to. And seeing it through a place of love, like when we see these whistleblowers come out of these more horrific programs, seeing them through the eyes of the, they're human beings. Mm. You know, it's like we've talked about this before, Catherine. There's so many people in this community that want to see, like, the royal children, George, Charlotte, and Louis. I won't carry on, but they, they don't think they have a right, you know, because of who their parents are. And I'm like, those are children. What the hell are you talking about? Those are children. It's horrifying, isn't it? Horrifying. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly when people are trying to do that to you and your children you're horrified and yet you would have those thoughts about someone else's it's absolutely kids, terrible they were born to a mother and father just like you were they mm. didn't pick to be i feel i feel i worry about them i feel empathy for them of what they might be experiencing behind, i don't know what they might be experiencing behind closed doors that horrifies me as a 41 year old woman because i see mm. them as children innocent children and to see people in this community go vigilante against a child mm. there is something very wrong very very wrong and i know our friends watching you know my opinion is that the truther community is controlled by the controllers too just like the normies are i think it's two sides of the same coin um and i think to really be awake you have to leave both behind um, we know there's controlled opposition. We know, you know, that we know. And that's the thing too, Catherine, we've seen this, this a lot in this community. Whenever a big wig in this community gets called out for abusing somebody, people panic and freak out and they start to shame the victim. Yeah. Just like the normies do to those who are coming out of horrific situations. So how are we any different from the normies? We're not, we're not any different from the normies. And I don't know what the answer is. Like, I, I mean, I think the answer is just to leave it all behind. But back to what you were saying with YouTube, like, I get it, Catherine. Like, there's only so much abuse you can take. Yeah. And so much when you just sort of think, okay, over to someone else now, someone else. I mean, it's it's like we use the term do your own research a lot. And obviously people, they've got busy lives. They've got responsibilities, whatever that looks like for you. And all of our lives, will, uh, our responsibilities are different. They're different at different stages of our lives. They can change in a nutshell, it, nutshell <laughs> in a click. You know, if suddenly a family member becomes sick, whether it's an animal or human, then suddenly you have to drop everything and deal with that. So all of our situations are different and will continue to change. And we need to react to that, let alone what we need to react with from external events that are imposed on us. And I think, you know, when we realize that, you know, people are just doing the best they can with the resources they've got, but I would still come back to the fact that, you know, you cannot, you do have to put the work in. So whatever might be important to you, I've had loads of people, I've had loads of people shame me because, you know, I'm still paying tax. Well, I haven't got time at the moment. It's not high enough up my priority list to sort of do all the legal work to become experts in that. I'm very pleased others are, and it might become a priority for me. It might not in the future. Who knows? But this constant shaming for what people's priorities are. But I think you do have to take responsibility for doing your own research. And that research can take many different forms. It doesn't have to be internet research. It doesn't have to be book research. It can be life research. Be like, okay, let's have a look and see you know, like Bob Proctor said, you know, he was told by one of his best mentors when he was in his early 20s, well, how's your life working out for you? You're broke, you're unhappy, you're a miserable person to be around, and you're always sick, and you're only in your 20s. You, the mentor was like, well, have you ever seen me sick? Have you ever seen me unhappy? Have you ever seen me stressed? And have you ever seen me not have money? It's like, we the, this research can be a good self audit it can be looking yeah. at your lifestyle we're not saying that we all have to be experts on everything going on in the world but we do have to be experts on ourselves we have to and take responsibility for ourselves we yeah. can't blame other people for what the, the, the what, where we are and 
you know, that's, that's, we see that in the truth of the world too. Like we know in the normie world, we have these like bloodlines, these elite bloodlines. Well, we're also seeing that being talked about in the truth of the world too. That these people are going to come in and save us because they're Christ's bloodline. No, darling, you're only responsible for you. That's the way the awakening that you take accountability, find your sense of self. If you're triggered, that's your golden lotto ticket to feel like, to figure out where you're still out of alignment. Where do you not feel capable? Where do you not feel looking after yourself? And we all do feel it. Well, I'm yeah, absolutely. Myself. I have times when I feel it. I'm like, oh my God, you know, which direction do I turn and what do I prioritize? With all this going on in the world, where do I prioritize? And it's a, a daily question. And I think it's a good one to ask yourselves because priorities do change. And when suddenly another light bulb of information goes on for you or another realization or another, oh my God, I've got that all wrong then you can look at what you do about it. But we can't know everything all at once. I mean, can you imagine how awful it would be? None of us would have a childhood. No, <laughs> you know, no. Time, the playing, relaxing, innocence, not having to have responsibilities. Um, so, you know, it's really good that we go through these other stages. That's why a lot of, um, you know, ancient wisdom, they value the elders because they've got the experience, they've got the wisdom, which only comes through living through it. And you don't want to wish your life away. You know, you don't want to be, I don't want to be as wise at my age as I hope I will be in my 90s. I don't want to wish my life away. I want to have those experiences, as many good ones as possible. But wisdom is gained through bad experiences. Wisdom yeah. is gained through through triggering. And and I will say, like, what happens? Like, like if 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 you're triggered by something I say or Catherine says, and you actually lean into that trigger and you do the research for yourself, what's the worst that's gonna happen? You're either going to think we're completely wrong and have the evidence to show for it, or you're gonna liberate yourself from mm. a previously held belief system that was keeping you enslaved in your own mind you know i, I heard marnie alton said that once in the class she was like half the time we think we're in a cage but then all of a sudden something happens and we realize the door to the cage isn't even locked we can just push this it is exactly what we were talking about in this animal communication thing we were talking about the analogies with viva vendetta and how many times all of us including me put ourselves in that self-imposed cage i do it a lot still i still know this but i still do it but i recognize it quicker and quicker it's yeah it's it's that that cage and I, i'll i'll to close i'll bring it back to how we started like let's say that you realize you spent your whole life believing that the bible was the actual word of god well let's first back up there's some really horrific things in the bible like stoning people you know for being women who were raped got stoned it was their fault right so that's a horrific idea not the god i believe in would do that um so then we start to understand that wow okay so this i've been told this is the word of god i've been programmed to believe it but now i have the evidence that it's not it was written by the freemasons oh interesting well they're also the group responsible for a lot of other nefarious stuff so what does that mean for me well if this isn't the word of god what is mm. and that liberates you because all of a sudden you realize that god is not confined to a book God is within you. And all of a sudden you're free. You don't have to meet the demands of, re of a religion. You don't have to meet the demands of what another man wants from you because now you really have, you're totally mentally free. That mental prison you put yourself in, you're free to have direct communication with God, with your with yourself, within your own temple. You know, it's like when we look at like the Zapperty Doodahs versus, you know, homeopathic. Mm. When you start to challenge the science and look at other possibilities, all of a sudden you become free because you're not chained and slaved to one system. And you get to now be the person that's responsible for making your own decisions, not doing what someone tells you to do because they've told you to do it, whether that's in religion, acad academia, whatever, politically, but because now you are free and you can see a little clearly to make your own decisions. You're not being puppeted by somebody else. And so I would, I would ask anybody who feels those triggers, like what would happen if you just leaned into them a little bit? Like what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to be free once you work through that. You're not going to be enslaved anymore because I guarantee you, 
for the for the the Christians want the God the real God is nothing like the God of the Bible the real God is mercy love grace and we all have a part of that and you're right like animals my dog doesn't care if I'm skinny or fat doesn't care if we live in a cardboard box or a mansion actually I think he would care if we lived in a mansion because he doesn't like to be separated he doesn't like yeah. he wants us all to be in the same room so I think that would stress him out a lot but um, you know he just he just wants to be with because that's they, they work off of love absolutely absolutely right I, I yeah, it's it's fantastic, and 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 also take the good from the bad because we can get we can go against everyone. I mean, I'll talk about well, perhaps we'll talk about what's going on with the farmers another time. But just be cautious where any time we're being led to a certain cause, yeah. it's like, you know. So so instead of being vigilante, and because vigilante is, I mean, even Magdalene her gospel talks about like there's the ra the, the the wisdom of the wrathful person, but she's very clear that this isn't vigilante. Like when there's, where there's, anger, there's change and you can make change and you can do it in a very respectful, loving way, not go vigilante where you're threatening people's lives and you're hurting people because that's not good either. And that's what the controllers want us to get to that point. They want us to get to the point where we're. They yeah. pick on one thing. It's like the whole, we should have a chat one day. People let us know in the comments if you want to about diet and nutrition. It's like this whole thing about you must never eat kale because it's going to kill you. I'm just like, oh my god oh there's, god no there's there's not everything in moderation yeah. you know you, you know you're not going to die of oxalate poisoning or or be affected by it by having a healthy balanced diet that includes real food right you know if you right. just eat kale or if you just eat anything you just eat bananas all day you'd be screwed you'd be <laughs> ill yeah so people just ever it's we take the isolation we all know that main farmer just takes everything down to its constituents are so part so much that they've forgotten how the whole body mind spirit works together but you can do that with diet as well as you could pick absolutely anything and come up with good and bad for it in but in moderation you know is it real food is it produced ethically right 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 loads of chemicals you know and that's um, the, they, they brought us to such an extreme way of thinking you know and so i guess to end it like if you're triggered and you're sending out nasty comments or hateful emails, you're playing right into the controller's hands. That's another way to look at it. You congratulations, you played their game. You 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 were doing exactly what you're the controller their team now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if you're able to actually maturely look at your triggers and consider and listen to what whistleblowers have to say without trying to shame the whistleblower in, in favor of protecting the abuser then you've matured then you've you've gone and it's a constant it's a, you know every day i work, have to work on that every day you know it's constant like okay am i protecting the abuser in whatever situation because that makes me feel safe because yeah this is an opinion of mine or am i able and love able to listen to the whistleblower and hear what they have to say through a loving yeah. place so anyway guys well i cannot wait to hear your suggestions down in the comment section below of what you would do in your life to try to work on your triggers or where you try to uh, put boundaries up around gaslighting, all that kind of stuff, because, you know, we do these coffee chats, not to really have an answer to give you, but like, hear what you guys have to say too, because we yeah. don't know what the answer truly is. So, all right, you guys, well, next week we'll be on Catherine's channel. I will put all her links down in the com uh, the description box below in case for some reason you're, you've never seen this beautiful lady. If you're new to the channel, I'll put her channel down there because we, we switch off every week. And also, you guys, just a quick announcement. My Sorry, my nose is running like crazy. Um, we must be speaking truth. Um, <laughs> quick announcement. Next week, so the weekend of St. Patrick's Day, right after I film with Catherine, we are going to be heading up to North Georgia for, you're going to love this, Catherine, for the Bigfoot Convention. We're going to be up there oh, in Lincoln, Georgia. Our friend Jessica, the cryptic huntress, I think she's speaking at the convention. She's going to be there. And she had said something to me about it. And I was like, you know what? That's only like an hour away for us. So we'll, why not? So we're going to be up there for the convention. I know a lot of you guys are are fascinated by this they're gonna have a lot of really great speakers so if you're close to the area it's going to be held at the dillard house which is a big kind of resort up there in that area they do i don't know their hotel rooms might be booked at this point but they do have some really big speakers um some paranormal speakers i think you're going to be there too it's like a two-day event um i will put a link to the website down in the description box below even if we're going to be up there for the weekend but even if you just come for the day i think some people are just coming up for the day 
Um, I'd love to meet some of you guys. I know Jessica would probably love to meet some of you guys too. And we can listen to some of these really, Robbie will be there. I was laughing with my boyfriend that I think if any of our viewers come to this convention, they'll recognize Robbie probably before they recognize me, he will be there. So, so anyway, I just wanted to put that out there guys. Cause you have a week now. That to sounds such fun. I wish I yeah. could go. Yeah. I know. And the tickets are only like $20. I'd probably even dress up. I'd, I'd love to dress up as Bigfoot. <laughs> I'm sure I can't wait to see what people are going to be. I mean, I think I, think I would love to dress up like that. That would really, I'd have a lot of fun like that. Yeah. It's a beautiful area of the world. It's so gorgeous up there. That's a huge hot spot for this type of activity. So yeah, if you're in the area and you need, you need something fun to do with like-minded people, it's like $20 for a ticket. So it's pretty affordable. Um, and there's tons of great speakers within this cryptid worlds that are going to be there and so that should be really fascinating to hear what they have to say and to hear their experiences so and jessica will be okay. there as well so anyway you guys well we will all we will talk to you next week bye everybody bye, bye, -bye.